Today we've got a really cool conversion we're doing to this Jeep Wrangler. It's called the TerraFlex Big Rotor Kit. This is a very simple bolt-on. It is just like doing a normal brake and rotor change. It even uses the stock replacement pads. We'll be using some simple tools. We've got brake fluids, brake cleaners, and some lubes and greases we'll be using today. Now this is not a difficult job. I would rate this three out of five wrenches for difficulty, and it may only take about two hours. It could take a little bit longer if you got your friends over, if you're watching a football game while you're doing this job or having some of your favorite beverages. Let's get started. So what we've done, we pulled the wheel off. We had a wheel space around here, so we had to pull that off. Now we're ready to pull the caliper and the caliper bracket off. We're pulling the caliper bracket off because it's got a, since so we're putting a bigger diameter rotor in here, we've got to put a new bracket on here that spaces it out a little bit. This is a 2007 Jeep, so it's seen a little bit of weather and uh, some off-road. So I'm going to go ahead and spray the back of these bolts with some penetrating oil so it's a little easier to get off. What I'm going to use is our brand new liquid wrench Pro Penetrant and Lubricant. This is a new formulation, uh, pretty high performance formulation. It's going to get, be able to get these bolts out. The great thing about it is, if you can see, there's not a lot of light in here. So with this, it's got a built-in LED, which helps easier to see things while you see where you spray. So we let that sit for a few minutes and really penetrate into the threads to make it easier to take off. Now we're going to go ahead and pull the bolts and the calipers off and then we'll pull the caliper bracket off. caliper off, so we'll wiggle it out of the way, do a quick inspection to it, um, don't see anything broken, hoses look really good, everything's in place, so there's really no need at this point to take the caliper off of the brake line, so there'll be no need to bleed it. So what we'll do is we'll just move this out of the way, just make sure it doesn't lay there dangling because you don't want to uh, hurt the hoses at all, the hose. So at this point in time, we're ready to take the, the, the brake pads out. Those simply just pull out. But there's a lot of brake left on these. They're still really good, but we're simply changing the rotor we're, we're, while we're in here. We're gonna go ahead and change these pads out. Anyway. Now at this point, we're ready to pull the caliper bracket out. So now that we have the caliper bracket off, what we need to do is there's a couple of pieces on here we need to transplant over from the old caliper to the new caliper. Uh, we're going to pull the caliper bolts out itself, and we're also going to pull these little spacers. They're kind of a, this is where the brake pad itself sits in there, kind of a rattle, I've always called them rattle brackets, but it keeps the brake pads from rattling around and making noise. That's as simple as those brackets are. Now you also have two caliper bolts. Now these just slide in and out because it actually the caliper itself sits in this bracket. It actually floats around and never really solid mounted. So that's where you need to make sure these are in really good working condition. So we've got a liquid wrench, synthetic caliper grease. It's perfect for that. Just open it up. You've got a little brush in here. This is here is all exposed to the outside weather and it's got a little bit of rust on it. This is a fairly close, close fit prop, uh, pieces here so we could actually spray a little bit of penetrating oil on there and just let it sit for a few minutes and then we'll be able to, it'll, it lubes it and penetrate and it sucks into, just creeps into the, those cracks.
Now we're going to want to clean everything off here real well because we've had a little penetrating oil over here and this is where our brake cleaner comes into play. Now you never want to use compressed air when you're doing a brake job, ever. What happens though is all those particles of brake dust that are here, the minute you spray it with air, compressed air, it gets into the air and you breathe them into your lungs and that is definitely a hazard. So this is why we keep brake cleaners on hand because this is one of the great things that it does. It will draw all that dust into a liquid and drip down into the, into the pan and won't leave it in the air. Whenever you're dealing with new brake parts, especially rotors, any metal parts, they always spray some kind of a rust inhibitor over this to keep it from any kind of rusting uh, during shipping and storing. So this is one you always want to make sure you do a good cleaning to, and this is where the brake cleaner comes into play too. So at this point we're ready to put the caliper bracket back on. So we're going to take a little bit of caliper grease and put it on our little shims right here for, uh, to help stop any kind of brake noise from rattling around. These are the two bolts we're going to use. So we're actually going to put a little bit of blue thread locker on these to help keep them in place and then we'll torque them down. So the things you want to make sure is you have no clearance issues between your rotor and your new caliper bracket. So you can, there's no rubbing. And that was why we put this nut in place to help hold it up against there. So where, that's where it's riding true. Perfect. So we're gonna put the spacer back on, put a little thread locker on here. So uh, uh, there'd be no chances of this spacer coming off. It looks good. Wouldn't hurt to clean it off a little bit. nice and flush up against there. So at this point in time, we're, we're ready to assemble the brakes on. Now there are two different brakes on these. You can see that one's got a little metal bracket sticking up. This is, we've always called it a squealer or a chirper. It's what happens whenever the brakes get down to a certain level that will rub and it's an indicator. It'll start squealing an indication that you need to uh, put new brakes on. We always make sure the brake pads are clean too. No contamination on them. Again, this is where your brake cleaner comes in great, plays in great. There you go, brake pads are in place. Now you're ready to put the calipers back on. Now since you put new pads on there, they're bigger than the ones that you took off thickness wise. So what happens is your caliper piston over time gets smaller and the gap gets smaller and smaller. So what we need to do is we need to push that back a little bit because right now if we were to put this on, or at least try to put it on, it's, it's not going to go on because the, it's, the gap is not big enough. So at this point your caliper's on, now you're going to take your caliper bolt that we took off earlier to get it off, we're going to put a little thread locker on it.
okay, it spins, f spins free. Then you're going to hear a little noise because that's the brake pad rubbing up against the rotor now. And this job is done. All we need to do at this point in time, put the wheel back on and we'll jump on the other side. Okay, the next thing we need to do is check the brake fluid. Since we squeezed those calipers in, some of the brake fluid will have gone back into here. So what we'll do is we'll start the truck, pump the brakes a couple of times to make sure the calipers seat, and then we'll fill the fluid up to the, make sure it's at the proper level. This particular application, per the manufacturer spec, it takes a DOT, a DOT3 brake fluid. There's also a DOT4 brake fluid. So just a little quick ex explanation on what the difference is between the two. It's boiling temperature. So there's a different boiling point that these get to. So some of your brakes that get hotter, our manufacturer is going to call for a dot four. Ones that just may not get as hot, they'll call for a dot three. Now normally these two can't be mixed, but if you take out, you can mix a higher boiling point down with a lower boiling point, but you cannot use the lower boiling point in something that's set like a dot three into a dot four system, but you can use a dot four into a dot three system because it's a higher boiling point, higher, a better, a better brake fluid. This would be a weaker brake fluid if it says dot four. This one here, per the owner's manual, it says it needs to be a dot three, so we're going to go ahead and fill up with a dot three fluid. This is a really good build today. We can't wait to get it out on the trail and try out the performance. If you found this video useful, please give us a thumbs up. We'd like you to subscribe to our channel and give us some comments below. Uh, what projects are you working on? Is there anything else you'd like us to do to work on to review? So with that in mind, we'll see you in the next video.